So the new sub will handle, um, you know, it'll generate a new instance of our class when it's called with uh, our specified values. And I'm not actually going to use any parameters in the new sub, so I'm going to say public sub new. So when the new screen is generated and drawn or or pulled up or invoked or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're going to set the name and I'm going to call this screen inventory and if you're wondering where this name property came from that is coming from our base screen so if you didn't uh, inherit this you would be getting an error. So we're populating a value in the, in in the parent class. So. Next up, we're going to want to set the height and width of our inventory window. This is uh, something you can uh, set as desired, or you can make yours, you know, changeable by the user. Um, I'm just going to use static values. I'm going to say I want a width of um, 224 pixels and a height of 224 pixels, making that a square window. Um, our menu slots, um, let's see, menu X, I'm going to give five possible values, uh, remember that is zero based, uh, it should have been four because it is zero based and I want five across and I want two down. Um, so we'll have, you know, zero, one, two, three, four for the top row and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for the bottom row. So we'll need two um, index values. Say menu y equals uh, 1. So 0 to 1, that's two rows. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So now that we have our values set, we can uh, redimension our array. So we'll say um, redim items and we're going to use for our uh, x parameter our x index or axis uh, menu x and um, menu y of course for the y value so what that tells us is that we're creating a new two-dimensional array of values uh, 0 to 4 and 0 to 1. That was pretty easy, I gotta tell ya. Alright, so we just created a new backpack. Um, now we need to track the screen position and if you don't track the screen position uh, it is just a pain when you go to start drawing graphics and stuff. It's nice to be able to track your window position so we'll just say pause x equals and this is why you will see because I want to draw to the center of the screen I have to do the game size or the game window size divided by 2 minus the width of our um, new screen divided by 2 so um, I'm gonna say globals dot game size dot X which um, set in our globals class um, is the width of our game window and I'm going to subtract from that divided by 2 the width of our screen divided by 2 which should center it perfectly so now width divided by 2 alright so we can repeat that same process for our height if you want it centered vertically. This centers it uh, horizontally and this will center it uh, vertically. And this is going to be position Y and we want to capture the height of the game window divide it by 2 and the height of our new screen divided by 2. So we just created a new instance of our um, inventory screen. Um, what we're going to need to do after this is uh, load our items. So I'm going to create a comment here. Um, uh, we want to actually load our items from our backpack as soon as the screen is drawn. And the screen will sort of be, you know, volatile. It'll be easily created and destroyed there. 
Um, what else do we need to do with this window? Well, we're going to have to handle input, right? Uh, be able to track our keystrokes for our WSAD keys and um, whether the, you know, if the menu's up and we press the I key again, then maybe we want it to go away. Or you can press the escape key or you can do both. Um, also, you're going to be invoking um, the item when you press the enter key or some other key that you want to use to uh, invoke your item. So, um, what else is there? You know, we're also going to have to draw the graphics to the screen and um, select our items and load the items. So let's go ahead and create our load item sub. This will populate our item list from our backpack. Any items that are stored in our backpack will be uh, sent to this screen as soon as it is drawn. Uh, so we're going to do public, actually this can be private, private sub uh, load items. No other classes should have to call this sub, so I'm going to set it as private and we'll do dim i as integer and give it a default value of zero so it doesn't bug us um, and what we're gonna do is loop through our uh, inventory slots menu X and menu Y and uh, then we'll also check the item count any items that are in our backpack will be drawn to those slots if they exist uh, we don't want it to crash if it goes outside of the bounds of the array, so we're going to have to use a, an if statement inside of our loops. So much like we do with our um, tile mapping, we're going to say 4x equals 0 to menu x, and then we're also going to have to loop through our y coordinate, so we're going to say y uh, for y equals 0 to menu y. And um, once we're inside of both of those loops, we are going to check and see, um, we're going to essentially check the index value of our items here and the count. So I'm going to say if i being our backpack index, because uh, we have to use an index value since that is a, a one-dimensional list, or yeah, that's right. So we're going to say if i is less than uh, globals dot player one dot backpack dot items dot count, then go ahead and uh, load those items. So we'll say items on the x y coordinate our backpack or our inventory list um, equals globals dot player one dot backpack dot items and the index of that list and to advance that index we're going to say i plus equals 1. So if, if an item was successfully added um, to our screen, this is the slot on the screen, the actual uh, slot that's drawn. So we add the item at this index starting at 0 and counting up through the items in our backpack by incrementing that index value. Otherwise, if nothing was found, exit the sub so we don't have any uh, crashes. And that's pretty much all there is to loading the items. So now that we've created this sub, we can come up here and uncomment that and not get any errors. 
So as soon as the new screen is created, it loads the items, it you know structures the screen, then loads the items and captures our screen coordinates. Oh boy. And we've only scratched the surface of our inventory screen here. So what else do we want to do? Um, item selection, drawing. Oh, drawing is going to be brutal. Uh, input handling. Hmm. I think what we will do first is probably our drawing sub. So I'm going to say public. Um, sorry. Uh, my brain just went blank. Okay, this is uh, we're going to be overriding the draw routine of the base screen, so we're going to say public overrides uh, sub draw. You can get rid of my base dot draw if you want, and um, we have to open and close our sprite batch. So that's usually what I do first. I say globals. Um, dot sprite batch dot begin to begin drawing and globals dot sprite batch dot end to end drawing okay so presently we are drawing nothing to the screen uh, before I get too buried in this uh, there's a, a lot of uh, stuff that we need to draw here uh, if you want it to look like we did we'll probably just make it ugly and simple at first here and then kind of grow it from there. If we want to uh, draw the borders and edges and corners and stuff that, that I did. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and just test this and make sure everything flows. Now presently we have done nothing. It's not crashing. That's a good sign so far. Uh, we've done nothing to invoke our new screen. So um, what we want to do is go to our world screen where everything is being drawn and set up a, a key handler in our, let's see, handle input. Uh, we need something to actually invoke this. Um, I'm going to go, ahead and go down below my NPC dialog invocation and um, add in if input calling on our input class key pressed keys dot I so if I press the I button then I want to open the inventory screen so I'm going to say screen manager dot add screen that is a method of our screen manager class again if you uh, haven't checked those older tutorials and you're wondering what on earth the screen manager is, uh, you might want to go back and review those uh, in the Adventures in X and A series. Um, so the new screen that I want to add is a new instance of inventory and because I'm using new here it's going to invoke this new sub and create the new screen with all of these values. Alrighty. Let's see, okay. So, I should be able to do that. Now, if you hit, if you come in here and hit your I button, you notice we, uh, we lost our um, ability to move and stuff. And that's because the new screen that was created that has no graphics and we can't see it, uh, has been created successfully, but it is also the focus screen. It has no, uh, you know, it's handling input, so it's ignoring uh, our world screen input, which is good. Uh, but at this point, uh, makes it so we can't move around and stuff. So we know that it's working successfully. That's a that's a good thing. So next up, we have to. Uh, you know, draw something to the screen. Uh, alternatively, you could jump straight to the handle input and make it so, you know, you press the escape key to get out of that or destroy the window. 
uh, so you can move around again. But uh, let's do something more fun. I'm gonna go ahead and work on our graphics. Um, I think what I will do is start with the inventory background image. Um, if you recall, uh, at the beginning of this tutorial, we set that up as inventory in our textures file. So what I'm going to do is call globals dot sprite batch dot draw, and I will the texture that I want to reference textures dot um, where are you inventory that's the guy right there and I'm just gonna draw the inventory graphic that I created to full size whatever size the window is is what I'm gonna draw it so um, I'm gonna say draw it to a new rectangle um, and I'm gonna set the uh, the coordinates that I want to draw to I don't want it to just draw anywhere on the game screen I want it to draw inside of this uh, invisible box that we've generated using the position X and position Y. That um, and I'm going to draw it to the full width and height of our um, new screen. So I'm going to say width and height referencing those variables from above. Now that was actually really easy. Uh, I'm just going to set it to a color of white. That adds no tinting to it, so let's just test that real quick and see what happens. Hey, look at that! We hit our inventory key and our new menu screen popped up perfectly. So it's drawing that graphic uh, to the full size of the window. What happens if we change the size of our window. Uh, say we want a little wider one instead of 224 I'm going to set it to uh, uh, about 480. So it's a really big inventory screen. Look at that. Now what you'll notice is that it is stretching the image to fit the size of the box. If you recall in mine, I'm going to go ahead and launch my other one here so you can kind of see I have these uh, borders that I was using for my dialog boxes and to use those borders you have to specify each little chunk of um, our menu graphic and draw them individually as individual parts and components and uh, that keeps them from being stretched over this whole image so we we you know grab a specific source rectangle off of that um, source image which I think was menu menu one dot png, and um, you know draw it to a very specific place on our new screen. So that takes a lot of messing around, and I will go ahead and add that in. I'm not gonna, because that positioning takes a lot of uh, messing around with the positions and the sources. I'm probably just gonna copy and paste all those values when we're done here. Uh, just so you'll have those to reference um, when you download the source. So, uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and set this guy back to 224. Uh, I better stop the project. 224. There we go. And take a little breather here for a moment.